Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh, and we're going to continue our process of doing this massive problem, which is awesome. So, in terms of this, we have gone through in the first two parts of this, we've gotten through the first part, which is finding the empirical molecular formula for ascorbic acid. That's what these two are. We found, um, we've done a limiting reactance problem. We changed it slightly into a limiting reactance problem, recognizing that the last question <laughs> couldn't be asked unless it was a limiting reactance problem. And so we have 15 grams of ascorbic acid and of oxygen, and those are reacted in a combustion type reaction. We've calculated the theoretical yields of each. That's what these two are. And now we need to calculate the mass of excess reactant. Now, to calculate the mass of excess reactant, you can go about this in two different ways. You can first go about it in a stoichiometric kind of way. So you could say, given this balanced chemical equation, right, and I'm going to write this back over here just so that I have it on a side that I can see easily, but I wanted to keep that information there. I got squeaky pink pens today. Oh, let's do something fun. Let's do green so that it really pops. There you go. All right, so in terms of this, this is the balanced chemical reaction. You can do this in two different ways. The first way that people technically teach this <laughs> is they say, OK, if you want to calculate the mass of excess reactant, you have to figure out how much of the excess reactant you used. And the way you can figure that out is by using the limiting reactant. So in the last video, we figured out that the limiting reactant is indeed, if I could write this right, 15 grams of ascorbic acid. And actually, I'm going to move it down a little bit because our second way of doing this would be good to have it right there. Ooh, there's my ascorbic acid. Hello, ascorbic acid, my limiting reactant. All right, the limiting reactant limits everything in the reaction, including how much of the excess reactant you could use. All right, so we need to figure out how much we used of that first. The process for this is exactly the same as what we had before. You could use this limiting reactant, divide by the molar mass, because we need to get into moles to be able to do a ratio between the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. Now, instead of comparing ascorbic acid to CO2 or H2O, I'm going to compare ascorbic acid to O2. And every time that I use one mole, of ascorbic acid. I also use five moles of O2. And then I can convert that into grams by using the molar mass of O2. Okay, this is only the process you use if you are going to be finding how much of the excess reactant you used. Otherwise, Usually our process for stoichiometry is going to be comparing something that's on this side, the reactant side, to a product. Because generally we're interested in the products, which is what we did in the last video. Calculating this out on my handy dandy calculator, I get 13.6 grams of O2. That's how much O2 was used in this reaction. That's how much I needed to react with 15 grams of my limiting reactant. To find out how much is left over or excess at the end, I just simply take this amount and subtract it from my beginning amount of O2. So to find excess, I just take my original amount of O2 which was 15 grams, and I subtract out how much I used. And I'm going to get a cool number like 1.4 grams of O2 is excess, right? Is left over at the end. That's what excess means. OK? Awesome process. A little bit easier way of finding how much what was used. We know from the law of conservation of mass that if I used up all of my limiting reactant, which means I used 15 grams of that, right? 
And I know how much I made of each of the other reactants, CO2 and H2O, then by the law of conservation of mass, if I don't know how much I have of O2, I just call that X. The mass of the, the overall mass of the reactants has to equal the overall mass of the products. So just set these two equal to one another and you can find probably how much you used a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and do that. If I solve for X, it's gonna be 22.5 plus 6.14 minus 15. Ooh. And I got 13.64. 13.6 grams of O2 was used in this reaction. A little bit easier way of finding the exact same thing I found from the stoichiometry. Okay, and it just used the law of conservation of mass. Okay, so now that we found that, we'll go on to the next part, which is going to require some erasing in terms of using uh, enthalpies, the reaction enthalpies, and trying to figure out some things about this reaction in terms of energy. Okay, until next time, I bid you adieu.